brother, wife, or husband than to capture a fortified city. And um, there's one thing you have to... We, how many has ever been offended in here? Raise your hand. All of us have. And you have to know how to handle that because uh, the devil can use it to just wipe you out but good. So we've all been offended. And uh, let me read that. That's the end there. An offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city. Arguments separate friends like a gate locked with bars. That's, that's good. That's 1819. That's a good way to put it, too. So I, uh, my, uh, I had this woman call me, and, and uh, this uh, man, and I knew, and uh, they wanted me to perform the marriage. Sometimes people say, uh, Pastor Bob, would you marry me? I said, no, I'm already married. So uh, I'm, I ain't going to marry nobody, but I will perform marriage sometimes. But I always seek the Lord on it and pray about it. And so um, I prayed about it about a week. And then I got back with her and I says, I, I just don't have the witness in my heart to perform the marriage. And boy, did she get offended. I mean, she just told me everything in the world. She thought about me and gave me the one, two, three and six and seven and but see that gives me a real opportunity to find out what I got is it all in my head or do I really have it in my heart some folks are top heavy but see when you got it in your heart when you love people when they do you wrong compassion flows out how many understand what I'm talking about some of you have experienced that this is what, the, what it happens. You have compassion for them. So I said, well, I just, just don't feel right. I, I just can't perform this uh, marriage uh, for, for, this, for you, this gentleman and you. Anyway, a week later came, uh, came by, a week passed, and she called me. She said, Pastor Bob, I want to thank you that you did not perform that marriage. I said, well, w what, what happened? He raped me. I said, what? He raped me, and he's in jail right now. So sometimes we don't understand why God says no. But God's God, and, and when you learn to walk in the Spirit, his ways are not our ways. Remember that. And, uh, and sometimes when it, people may ask you if you could do something, and you pray about it, and you can't do it, we ought to be free enough to just, well, that's okay, brother. You know, that's fine. Uh, no problem. You know what I mean? Just be, don't be so, help me to say the right word. I don't want to say ugly. Um, <laughs> but have a little bit more love flowing out. Because I can't do everything that people ask me, and neither can you. Hello? Are you out there? See, so... So the thing, that, the thing about it is that we have to have love. Love is the more excellent way. You can have all the knowledge, and we know what uh, 1 Corinthians 13 talks about. And you can have all that knowledge. You can do this, and you can do it, but if you have not love. So the love of God has been shed in our heart by the Holy Ghost, and we have to let it be the, the, the thing that, um, that guides us and leads us. I thank God that uh, I love people. I love my wife. I love you. Regardless of what you say about me, and most of you are kind and I appreciate it, but I've had some folks say some ugly things about it. Uh, when Susan and me left the uh, denominational church, uh, <clears throat> we had some people that said a few things. <laughs> they didn't understand that we were following the Holy Spirit. And, uh, but then later on, we just kept on smiling, we kept on loving, we kept on preaching and teaching and, and living our lives as we should. And, uh, but then they found out that we were genuine, that we were people that were trying to walk in the Spirit and follow, follow the Lord. Now what happens is when you do get resentment and you get hurt, here's what will happen. First, you really actually get hurt. You're hurt because... Uh, they didn't do what you wanted them to do. And, 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 and it's hard to break through that hurt. You, you, you feel that, that hurt inside of you. And, and, and then if you don't deal with it and forgive the person, 
then you begin to resent them. It goes into resentment. See, it's a sequence, one to the other. And what happens is, if you don't forgive them and release them and bless them, remember what the Scripture says. Uh, put it up on the board, 1 Peter 3, 8 and 9. We never can get enough of this because this, as a pastor, where I find people are at, and in relationships, this is the biggest challenge you'll ever have Walk in your Christian life in, in it, that is in relationships with brothers and sisters in the Lord, with your own family, people on the job. Uh, this is where it's at. Finally, all of you should be of one and the same mind. Not talking about Christian people here. We're talking about the church. United in spirit, sympathetic with one another, loving each other as brothers of one household, compassionate and courteous and tenderhearted and humble. Now, let me say something. When you read the book of Ephesians, you'll find that Paul is talking to the Jews and he's talking to the Gentiles. The Gentiles hated the Jews and the Jews hated the Gentiles and the Jews thought that the Gentiles were just dogs. That's us, by the way, Gentiles. You have to understand the condition of that day when you, when you see Paul's letters as he wrote those letters and he's talking to the, uh, uh, the Jews and the Gentiles in the body of Christ. Love one another. Forgive one another. Okay, now we just, we're all Gentiles here. But you've got to understand the hostility that was in the heart of, of the Jews towards the Gentiles, and so the Gentiles towards the Jews. Just look at that up there. Now, when I read the scriptures, this is what I do. I look at that, and I say, is that me? Everybody look at that. Read that. Is that you? Very simple, not complicated. Now, if that ain't you, that's why we have the Holy Spirit to help us. Say, Lord, I really see I fall short in loving my brothers or sisters in the Lord. I fall short. Lord, help me. See, that's why we got the Holy Spirit. He's been given to us to help us, not to condemn us, not to put us down, but to help us to come in uh, a little bit into the Spirit of Christ where we can love one another and appreciate one another. Same thing of the husband and wife. Says to me, he'd been married 60, um, I think four, 64 years, is that right? Uh, come this month, yeah, 64 years. We never had any problems. How many believe that? <laughs> But we've learned, we've learned not to kill each other. We learned to talk it out and pray one for another. But hardly anymore. We, we don't seem to have any, any problems at all but it's between us two, okay? It's just that we're just have one spirit, see, when you become one spirit. So when you check that, read that, and, and, and measure yourself with that, okay? Don't let it bypass you now because this is where... Because let me, let me say something. We, we're living in a time, I mean, right now, an atomic bomb could come down and we're out of here like that. We are in a different generation than ever before. How many realize that? I mean, you, you see, you got, we got to wake up and realize we are in the last days. And I tell you, those people in California and Florida and uh, Puerto Rico, I mean, it, just like that. So you won't have time to amend things. So keep yourself up in the, in the Lord. Don't go to bed with your anger. Forgive people. Look at the person next to you. Tell them you're human. Go ahead. You're human. Just look at them. Say you're human. Look at the real human beings in here. And any of us can make a mistake. So... We have, to, we have to give people freedom to make mistakes. But see, that's how you learn. You see, that's how you learn. Now, I got hurt one time by a woman years ago, and as God was doing that work in me and putting more grace and mercy into me where I could live it out in my everyday life, it took me three months to get the hurt out. How many has ever worked at it that hard? You've, you've been hurt so bad. Look at the people in here. 
Sure. So keep, just keep blessing the person. Keep blessing the person. Turn to the next scripture. Now, this has been one thing that, that has helped Susan and me over the years. And, and I want you to look at the next verse, 9. First Peter 3, 9. Never return evil for evil. Why? I ask questions. when I, Why not? Because you're going to do more harm than good. That's for sure. You should be so secure in God that you know that God will take care of it. That's powerful. That's powerful. God will take care of it. If that person is trying to hurt you and put you down, bless them. Pray for them. Because God will be on their little red wagon. Are you listening? Absolutely. I've seen, I can give you testimonies after testimony. Some folks that, well, I won't go that way tonight, but they ain't here no more. But look at, never. Everybody say never. never. What does never mean? Never. never. <laughs> Return evil for evil. Because why? What you sow, what? You reap. Or insult for insult, scolding, tongue lashing, berating, but on the contrary, blessings. Bless them. Now, boy, this is so beautiful. Praying for their welfare. That person that offended you, the person that, that maybe said some bad things about you. Pray for their welfare and their happiness. And pray for their protection. And their welfare and their happiness and protection and truly pitying and loving them. But see, when God does that work in you, that's what flows out of you. How many of you know that there's some bad things that flow out of the flesh? Name one thing that flows out of the flesh. All right, pride, anger, revenge. I'll show them. Yeah, you'll show them, all right. <laughs> See, you've got to keep your... The Bible says, stand fast at that liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. And be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. So, you, we have to walk each day and constantly forgive and give. Now, this particular woman, I had to keep... This is where this scripture came. I kept blessing her, blessing her. And I noticed the change in me that that the healing was coming and the blessings were flowing in me. And I was getting blessed as I continued to bless her. Look what it says now. For knowing that to this you have been called. See, I've been called to bless. Mm-hmm. Stay true to your calling. We've been called to bless. That you may yourself inherit a blessing. That's why I'm so blessed. I bless everybody. I bless our president. I bless everybody. I bless them. That's what God told me to do. Boy, when I, got to, when, I, when I realized that Jesus said pray for your enemies, I mean, that rocked me a little bit. Pray for your enemies. Yes, pray for your enemies. All right, look what it says. You've been called, that you may yourself inherit a blessing from God. So when you bless somebody, God will bless you, that you may attain a blessing as heirs, bringing welfare and happiness and protection to yourself and to others. Now, i got a question I want to ask you, now, because I'm your shepherd and I love you. Are you free tonight in your spirit? You got somebody you're mad at? Hmm? How many is mad at themselves? <laughs> How many's ever got mad at themselves? Yeah, we all have, sure. So start blessing yourself. Start blessing yourself. Sometimes we're rougher on ourselves than we are other people. So bless others, bless yourself, because it's so important. But you've got to deal with those issues because if you don't, they'll eat you alive, and somewhere down the line, the devil will take over and this is why when people, they let that stuff build up and build up and build up. And this is all of a sudden it will explode in anger. Next thing you know, they shoot somebody. So you've got to keep yourself clear. Because I want to tell you something. I wish I didn't have to tell you. But you're going to get hurt again. 
I may even hurt you. I don't mean to hurt you. You might hurt me, but I know how to handle it because I'm going to bless you. See? If you're married, guess what? You better start blessing your mate because he or she will hurt you. And they don't mean to all the time. Because, you see, a lot of times it just, the things are built up in people and, they, and, and then they explode. And usually the closest person to you is the one that gets the full blast. <laughs> and most married people say, yeah, that's right. You ever notice some women's hairdos, are, they change over some... <laughs> Now, the Bible says, oh, no man, nothing but love. You know, when we expect somebody to do something and they don't do it, we get happy. <laughs> no, we get mad. You said... Yeah, I was expecting it, yeah. But see, you got to learn. We all have to learn to handle that. That's just life in general. you got to know how to handle that. That's how what you teach your kids. You teach your kids how to handle these offenses. You teach your kids how to forgive. You teach your kids how to bless. That's what you teach your kids. And on and on and on we could go. So... So this is what we have to learn ourselves. Now, here's the biggest thing in us. There's things inside of us at times. We, we don't want to forgive. No, we, 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 want, we want revenge. That, there's that satisfaction. I just like to put my hands around his throat and strangle him good. Uh, how many of you ever experienced that? No, don't re there's two of them. <laughs> sure. I, I, I've sent so many people to the moon, it, it's, it must be loaded. But I don't do that no more, you know. I've learned to bless people, bless them, bless them. If you got kids, <laughs> come on up, we'll pray for you. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right. So, when we when we expect uh, expect somebody to do something, they they don't do it. We can get mad. We can get hurt. We can get we can be offended. Okay. Another thing that you'll find out that disappointments. When you're disappointed, you can you can get hurt. Welcome to the club. Preconceived ideas will affect us and how we feel about others. So we have to learn. It's a learning experience. Because remember, if we are right with one another, then we'll be right with God. If we're not right with one another, First John brings this out tremendously. If you don't love your brother who you see, how can you say you love God whom you don't see? So we have to learn to do that. But, but, but once that thing is built up in you, the devil will use that I'll guarantee you, use that to wipe you out completely. So we have to even understand that there's that, that certain preconceived ideas will uh, can affect us tremendously. Now, others are not doing all we think that they should do. Oh, that's a good one. Um, we can get hurt. We can get offended. Susan uh, grew up with a family, a big family, and uh, she had to do a lot of things. And one day she told her stepmother that so-and-so wasn't helping her. And instead of her stepmother talking to the other one that was supposed to help Susan, she spanked Susan. So Susan didn't say no more about it. Anyway, it backfired on her. Perfection. Let me say if you are someone that you, it, everything's got to be right. If it ain't, I can't stand it. If you're married to a perfectionist, Lord, come up here and let us pray for you. <laughs> you know, I love you, but that's so true. 
And I like things to be right. That, that, that's good. That's wonderful. But don't let it drive you crazy. And uh, Susan B. was uh, counseling this young couple years ago. And this, this young man, he was a perfectionist. And she'd work all day long because she knew that everything had to be right because <clears throat> if it wasn't, he'd lose it when he got home from work. So he comes home from work. And he puts his white gloves on. <laughs> Goes around the house. Well, how, how long do you think she can take that? <laughs> anyway, if you go to the moon, you'll meet him up there. Uh, <clears throat> but see, that got older after a while. And we, we worked with him. We did our best to try to help him. <clears throat> And finally, I got that. he got in the chair, and I said, let, let me pray for you. Maybe it's a demon, you know. <clears throat> and, and I declare, I put him in the chair, and I tell you, he turned around and looked at me like this. He says, can we, can we talk about this? I said, demon, come out of him right now. We ain't going to talk about it. Out in Jesus' name. He wants to talk about it. Well, he lost that one. So when you deal with people, you're going to deal with all type of personalities, all type of uh, people that have all kind of type of opinions, and, but you've got to love them. Because God loved us while we were yet sinners, you see. And uh, you can't change nobody. If you could change somebody, who would you change? Yeah, I changed myself. So that's a dead end road too. You've got to depend on the Lord to do the work in you. That's why I like that scripture in uh, Philippians 1 6. Put it on the board. Philippians 1 6. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Because for about 10 years after I was saved, I lived in um, uh, Romans 7. Things I wanted to do, I couldn't do. Things I didn't want to do, I did. How many's ever been there? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm convinced and sure of this very thing. What is that, Paul? That he who began a good work in Bob, in me, in you, will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return. Now, who's going to do the work in you? You've got to put your faith in him. You've got to say, Lord, you're the only one that can change my heart. You're the only one that can change me. Father, I thank you right now. Holy Spirit, do your work in me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You've been given to me to teach me, to instruct me, uh, to correct me. Learn to love correction from the Lord. And it may come, to, may come through a brother. It may come from your wife or your husband. But come under, because God gives grace to the humble. Look, uh, developing that good work and that perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. Now, until you learn that, and when you learn that, you know that only God can change that other person. So you start praying, Lord, do the work in them, but do the work in me. That's where your faith is to go. Let me say this. Religion changes the person outwardly. But God changes us inwardly. And then it is manifested outwardly. It is so easy. You don't have to try to love people. When God does the work in you, that's all you can do. So it's hard for the natural man or the carnal mind to understand that. But that's what God, because see, you couldn't save yourself. Let me read this. And you he made alive when you were dead. That's in Ephesians, by the way, chapter 2, verse 1. I'm going to say that again. Put that on the board real quick. Like, mm, That's powerful. And you, he made alive when you were dead, slain by your trespasses and sins. And you, he made alive when you were dead, slain by your trespasses and sins. Now, I want you to look at that and take that like in your carnality, in your unforgiving spirit and everything in you that you hate or I hate it's going to be him that's going to take that out of you and put himself 
where he will come forth in your life and you just love people. You just forgive people. <clears throat> Someone said, well, you forgive me, but I forgive you before you do it. Because you have a, that forgiving spirit has been developed in you by the Holy Spirit. One amen. amen. I appreciate it. Yeah, okay. Now, when you read the scriptures, and you read that, and you realize that he made us alive. We weren't looking for God. God looked us up and saved us. And he, and he, and he made us alive. Now, you finish reading the next two verses. It talks about like how we were and we followed the prince of the power of the air and we were disobedience and all this different thing there. That was how we used to be. But now it says, but God in verse four and put that on the board, it is rich. But God so rich is he in his mercy because and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us. Now, keep that on the board. <clears throat> I'm 80, 84 come March. And in my walk, as I walked and, uh, and I can look back in my life, there's things that um, I wanted to do and, and I did it and I got satisfied for a while. And then I got dissatisfied. Maybe about six months after I accomplished that, then I get something else and get satisfied a little while, and then I'm dissatisfied. Now, you may be in that mode. You do this, and you feel satisfied, and then, and then all of a sudden you're not satisfied anymore. See, if you live long enough and walk as long as Susan and me have walked in the Spirit and in, in God, there are certain plateaus in your life you've got to get through. You've got to get through them. Because sometimes they're deserts. Everything is dry. But that's the real test. That's the test whether you're going to be faithful. Or you're just going to give it all up. And I've seen people give it all up. But as you get through those desert periods of time, God does a great work in you. And when you come out, boy, do you appreciate things much more better. We appreciate the little things. I mean, we, we get down to the, Lord, thank you for my shoes. When's the last time you thanked God for your shoes? Don't tell me. You'll never do that. Does anybody here do that? No. There's two people, three people. Good. How many thank God for your feet? <laughs> that you got shoes to put on. Okay. But, but see, you get down to the little things, like your eyes. You can see. You can hear. Sometimes you don't, you don't know the blessing until you lose it. Boy, when you lose it and you regain it, you, boy, there's appreciation in your heart. Oh, there's appreciation in your heart. Now, I want you to see that scripture now. Now, remember, God's got a, a lot in this thing. It ain't just about us, but it's also about God. Now, look, but God, so rich is he in his mercy because of and in order to satisfy to satisfy. Something has to be satisfied in God. Now what is it? The great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us. That has to be satisfied. Quiet in here. When you love somebody, you want to be with them. What I want you to see, that God loved you so much and me so much, Something had to be satisfied in him. And that was to get you back to himself. Awful quiet in here. If you understand that, my child, it ain't all about you being satisfied. It's about God being satisfied to get you back to himself. Because he lost us. He lost us. And he loved us so much. I'm going to get them back. I'm going to get my children back. See, he's a father. As a father, I understand that. If my child was somewhere over there, I'd do everything I could to get them back home to me. 
You, you see that? I want you to see God that way tonight. And for him to have that satisfaction in him, that love that he loved you so much, he wants you to be with him. And I want to turn over and we're going to close with this because they're going to have some cookies back there for us. But this is in, uh, <clears throat> in uh, Revelation, okay, 21, verse 1 through 7. Start with verse 1. Now, John is saying something that he's seeing in his spirit. He says, Then I saw a new sky, heaven, and a new earth. For the former sky and the former earth had passed away, vanished, and there, and there no longer exists any sea. Well, there'll be a lot of land on the earth. Now, look at the next verse. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, all arrayed like a bride beautified and adorned for her husband. God made that beautiful city for you and me. Then I heard a mighty voice from the throne, and I perceived its distinct words, saying, See, the abode of God is with men. Now stop right there. The abode of God is with men. He wants to abide with us. See, we always look at it from our viewpoint. Oh, I want to abide with God. Well, let me tell you something. God wants to abide with us. And he's prepared a mighty city. And look what it says. And he will live in camp and tent among them, among us. And they shall be his people and God shall, be, shall personally be with them and be their God. Change your thinking a little bit. That's how much he loves you. He wants you. We always say, Lord, I want you to be with me. And God says, I want, I want to be with you. You know, I am convinced if, 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 the, if the Holy Spirit can open up our hearts and minds to, to grasp that just a little bit tonight. I hope everyone in here would say, you mean God wants me with him? That's right. Think about it. You. You and you and you and you, all of us. He wants us to be with him. Whew, what a tremendous God we have. Powerful. Powerful. Next verse. God will wipe away every tear. He don't want us to cry no more. Everything this old world has done to his people. There's a time when God said, that's enough. I've, that's enough. That, it, it, it's going to all change now. It's going to be a new heaven, a new earth. And they're going to be up here with me. And I'm going to be with them. I remember, just hold that right there. I remember when Susan and me first got married and we were going to, you know, uh, I, went, I was in the Air Force and I went to, back to Delaware and I left her down here. And we're going to save our money where we could have a nice home save. And that lasted about two weeks. And I called her on the phone. And I said, Susan, I want you up here with me. If we have to eat hot dogs and butt meat. <laughs> How many understand what I'm saying? That's just the way love is. You want to be together. And we feel that same way today, tonight, just as strong as ever. We get in bed and, and just us being in bed together and and she'll scratch my back, and I don't want to go no further than that. But, <laughs> but you know, we just, just I'm, this is all clean now. We're married. The bed is undefiled. Okay. 
some of you blushing. <laughs> but the, 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 the security that we feel, the, 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 the oneness, the security, the, the, the feeling we have, you can't beat that feeling. It's awesome. See, when we're with God, that's the way it'll be. We'll feel so secure to ever be with God, and God is with us, knowing that we're not bothering him. He loves us. Look at that. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death shall be no more. Neither shall there be anguish, sorrow, and mourning, nor grief, nor pain, nor offenses, and all of that. It wipes people out sometimes. Anymore, for the old conditions and the former order of things have passed away. Folks, walk out of this place tonight knowing that God loves you. He loves me. I am convinced by my experience of life itself, because I've had my wilderness experiences, my rejection, all the things that Susan and me have had to overcome by the grace of God. It's so wonderful to be at peace with yourself and at peace with one another. Because let me tell you something, God is a God of peace. And I love him and I know you love him. And I just want to encourage you, remember, he started it and he's going to finish it as we hold fast to our faith in him. Let's pray. Father, I thank you right now that the Holy Spirit would move in such a way in our hearts that we can grasp the fact, regardless of whatever, that you love us. You started this. You called us out. You gave us the faith. You saved us. You caused us to be born again. You started the work in us, and you will finish, and you will finish that work. And we rest in that, and we thank you for the victory right now tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said,